Hello and welcome to the Sunbird Crochet Podcast. My name is Claudia and I'm coming to you from Germany. has been quite a day but I feel like I'm missing out on my crochet friends so I thought I would come here even though it might be just a short episode and what I would like to talk about today is my current whip come on Hildegard show it to the people I'm working on a cardigan, which is based on another knitting pattern called the Batignol by Sophie O'Kera. Um, I was asked by Rika to tell you why and how, how I'm going about making a crochet garment from a knitting pattern, why I'm choosing which technique. So this this will be a cardigan, but as in color work, in crochet, I would say you would always want to do the color work working on the right side. That's because I'm in the technique I'm using, um, even though it's quite similar on the back, the color work wouldn't be as defined on the back. There is a way to use different stitch on your return row but if you want to make a color work cardigan which involves sticking then um, yeah i prefer this way what i did was take off your head hildegard okay what i did was i was chaining 100 stitches and that was my beginning for the cardigan i will add a border later like a neckband possibly an eye cord neckband and also a faux button band here in the front so i I've, I've chained 100 which was just like i chained as many as i thought would be suitable so that i would have a proper size for my head size and as wide as I wanted it to be open. So it's not very scientific for me at this stage. I, this is just for me. So if you do it for different sizes and you are grading it, that's my problem. Yeah, so I would, I don't have such problems thinking about grading if I just make it for myself. Of course, I can try it on all the time and I see how it works. So in this case, I chained 100 and then that was, um, also the chart of the uh, batignol sweater starts with um, i don't have it in my head anyway you have a certain a number of stitches which you repeat all around so that you get your color work my 100 stitches are can be divided by the number of uh, stitches i have to begin with per repeat makes sense to me <laughs> You know what I mean. If you have like a color work chart which starts with six stitches, then you have to have a beginning chain which is dividable, the, num the total number of stitches by six. So I, I can't remember how much it was in this case. I'm just like talking about the general idea. And then the knitting chart has increases at the yoke because you want this to not to go down strictly right away because you do have shoulders so it has to go straight and in this case you have to increase your number of stitches at some stages and uh, this is a tricky bit 
when you turn a knitting color work chart to a crochet color work chart or you use the one to make a crochet garment because your row gauge is most likely going to be different from your knitting row gauge. So in crochet you will be quicker working down, your rows will be longer or higher and um, that's why you might run into problems when it comes to the shaping of a yoke. You will have to adjust your stitches according to your body and not follow blindly the chart, the knitting chart. Therefore, it is best if you use a color work chart which is divided. The knitting color work chart is actually coming in separate, like two or three separate charts so that you can increase your stitches in between. And uh, But here at the Batignol so far, I'm actually quite pleased with how it goes. I haven't increased. Um, I have increased the stitches, but at the same rate as the knitting pattern suggests. So at the moment, it fits me quite well. What I've added is the sticking line. In knitting, you would add a couple of stitches here and then you would reinforce it, for instance, with crochet stitches, and then you can cut it in the middle and then you work a button band over your ends. In crochet, you have here, I've made six chains. I would take both strands. I'm working with two colors here, so it's two strands of yarn. I would chain six chains with both yarns. And then I would start here again on the other side with my normal color work. And I do this all the way down. And uh, at the end, I will have to snip the chains, or in the middle, right here, snip the two strands of yarn, which I will then pull tight so that it doesn't unravel. And then I have like a fringe here, and I will have to work a button band over the fringe. And yeah, I'm planning not to add a proper button band, like with holes, but I have some lovely vintage buttons here, which will be just like a faux button band and they will be on the top. They are blue with red. I got them on a, what's it called? Like not a fun fair, like a second hand market, public outdoors and in Bavaria actually. And yeah, back in those days, they were sewing all these buttons onto a piece of cardboard. It's, it's a little bit like uh, aged, <laughs> but the buttons are lovely, I think. And they are quite heavy, but um, since the button band will be double layered, um, I don't stress too much about the weight of the buttons. I don't know how many, if I will use all of the buttons. I don't think so, but um, yeah, we will see. And this is my plan so far. Uh, it still takes some time until I will reach, uh, reach the sleeve splitting area, splitting for the arms, for the sleeves. Especially because I have to rip it all back until this section here, because I made a mistake with uh, color chart obviously because the increases in knitting is one row later than the increases in crochet i could i could throw this into the corner right now anyhow so next time i will have ripped this back until here redid the whole thing again because this line has to go there this line has to go there you know, it's uh. <laughs> back to my oblivious previous 
recording. And I'm thinking about like just keeping it boxy shaped and adding the sleeves only quite further down so that I have probably just above here the middle upper arm there because then I can add here like a sideways ribbing and crochet and that might be quite nice to wear and or I could actually pick up some stitches on the edge of my crochet work uh, with a knitting needle and then I can just knit some ribbing which might be faster. I'm not afraid to mix crochet and knitting together so we will see. Now Hildegard you can have your head back. Okay so that's my big whip at the moment. In other news I still owe you I still owe you me wearing my Illuminate sweater. So let me just try it on. So there you go. This is my Illuminate sweater, worn. <laughs> I'm really happy about it. <laughs> yes, um, this is, uh, I didn't add any short row shaping at the back. That's why it comes up quite high here. I know that a lot of people would be bothered about this, but I'm actually not. So um, yeah, that's, that's, that's my Illuminate sweater. Let me just pull it down a little bit. There you go. One Illuminate sweater in crochet. I was quite surprised to get a little box today when I came back from the clinic and this is Biene Maya, the Bee Maya, <laughs> a children's cartoon from my childhood actually and it's still popular today. So um, this is from my cousin Miriam who might be watching, I don't know. Um, she sent me a lovely card which says, das Glück des Lebens kann niemand schmieden, immer nur das Glück des Augenblicks, which means something roughly translated that happiness in life cannot be like, cannot be made by anyone. You can only create a happy moment kind of thing. And she says on, she wrote on the back, einfach nur mal so. So just, just because. <laughs> Love you, Miriam. So that was very, I don't know, unexpected joy. And I think that's, that's one of the best kind of joys. And she sent me yarn. And we, we, we talked today on the phone. It was lovely to catch up again. I haven't talked to her and seen her for a while for numerous reasons. Um, so she's she's knitting she's not a crocheter but she's knitting and she has chosen some yarn for me in lovely colors I think she knows that I love the greens and there's some gray and some pink so uh, thank you Miriam <laughs> I told her that uh, I think the yarn wants to become a blanket and then some massive parcel arrived i bought it it's the yarn for my twist and turns mcal 2022 stephen west project and i bought this at pink queen yarns which is an indie dyer in germany here what i didn't know was that she would send me also a project bag with it and a pin button and a pen so thank you <laughs> let me show you how it all looks like rustling so this is this is the little message and that's a sheep it's a rainbow sheep pin button and then she sent me a rose gold 
pen which is also very nice rustling and then this bag was in there which is pink obviously pink queen yarns and now for my choice of colors for the or it, she chose it but i chose to buy the kit so really really lovely sweet pea is the color name and the base is called tilda 100 superwash merino two ply 100 grams equals 365 meters it's good for a needle 2.5 to 4 millimeters and the colorway is called sweet pea and with that together two skeins of yarn same base they're all the same base and this is the color colorway plum it's a grayish purple which will look really great together i think and as my pop color as my pop color there's going to be this neon orange <laughs> this will really pop this yarn kit makes me even more excited about the cow and yeah i just love it i love these two colors together and i think that the pop color the pop color will really emphasize the beauty of these two muted muted colors i'm loving it i can't wait to show you i can't wait to begin it will start on the 6th of october that's when it will be cast on day and um, yes it's quite intimidating because i'm not so good with knitting but i'm confident that the teacher will show us how to yes how often have you changed your mind about your mcal colors otherwise personal news i've had the day off today because i went with my father to the oncology clinic in cologne and he he was very brave today he got some injections and some therapy against his cancer and um, that's why it was extra special to come home and to find a lovely present of my from my cousin and uh, talking about presents two of the three prizes from the giveaways last time um, they're already on their way one to australia and one to canada you know who you are <laughs> and the other one will go to liz and I have it all packed and prepared and I aim to send it off tomorrow, which is Tuesday. So, yeah, that's all from me and Hildegard for today. And I hope that you will join me next time again. And I hope that I will have some more of the cardigan to show you. I'm not sure yet if I will continue with the uh, color work or if I will maybe change to just a crochet stitch later undecided yet so i will talk to you soon again keep well keep safe and most of all don't forget to laugh even at the worst times in your life nothing is permanent so see you next time bye